first live makeup masterclass yeah. right here on the Facebook. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. This is so super exciting. The two lovely ladies next to me, I need to introduce them. First up, we've got Candy Kane. Hi. She's, of course, a makeup artist, a beauty vlogger, as well as an influencer. And then we've got the gorgeous Robin, who's our model for the evening. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> I'm so excited. Thank you for being here. No, thank you for inviting me. I'm so excited. So, so too. super cool. And I think. The topic that we're talking about today in terms of foundation, I think it's something that many women struggle with. Yes, um, absolutely. There's so many problems and issues that they face when it comes to foundation. As a makeup artist, is it something that ladies are often asking you for help with? Oh, all the time. I think most of the Instagram inboxes and Facebook questions I get are always based on foundation. And not just that, I think it's also a struggle for makeup artists out there, you know. So it's definitely something that's great to focus on and people don't really have enough knowledge around that. Absolutely, I agree. No, I completely agree. So I think we're just going to jump straight into it. By the way, of course yes. we're live, so send through your comments, send through your questions yeah, for Candy we want to chat to you exactly, guys. Exactly, whatever you want to know. I'm not the expert. <laughs> She's the expert. No, man, you know stuff. a lot. I, as know, well. I mean, I've been in the makeup chair a few times. So I kind of like know what I'm doing, but you're the expert here. So I think starting at the beginning, preparation when it comes to foundation is important. So like Absolutely. moisturizing, primers, yeah. what's your vibe when it comes to that? Okay, so you want to be careful of using just any moisturizer. So the first thing I'm going to start with is just by quickly cleansing her skin. I'm using Garnier Micellar Water on a cotton pad because even though she had no makeup on, you have like natural oils and stuff that can also dilute, not dilute your makeup, but kind of make it break up sure. so it wouldn't last as long. So the first thing I like doing is just going over the skin with like a cotton pad and some micellar water on there just the to way, make sure. I must just add that like Candy of course did the eye makeup here and it looks spectacular. Oh thank you so much. Robin you look <laughs> amazing. Okay so that's the first step as you can see we do have some some stuff go, coming out like coming off. <laughs> so then we have to step into the moisturizing game. Now for a lot of people I always tell them rather when you wake up let's you, let's say you wake up you brush your teeth wash your face then do your skincare routine. Wait about 15 minutes so make breakfast mm. uh, get dressed that sort of thing. Let it settle. Exactly yeah. because if you just start with your skincare and immediately make your foundation routine after that it will dilute your foundation mm. and your foundation won't either go on as full coverage as it should, won't stay on, won't blend nicely. Mm. But I do have an option for those who are like really in a hurry. Yeah, if you've got limited time like me, if you yeah. have a child or you're so, just lazy or like yeah. I am. So yeah, if you've got rocks. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, if you're lazy. So <laughs> the moisturizer that I'm loving is the Clinique Moisture, Moisture Surge. I don't know if you use this I haven't before. ever tried the Clinique, okay. no. So what's nice about it, it gives you 72 hours hydration but it's also like water based and it's also got hyaluronic acid in it so it's gonna mm -hmm. plump up those fine lines or dehydrated under eyes that you have and what I love about it is because it's water based it's gonna really seep into the skin quickly so mm -hmm. you can immediately after that start with your with your foundation so I'm just using a normal stippling brush this is from Real Techniques love and, uh, Real Techniques brushes yeah, like Real Techniques let's just quickly talk about that so I know a lot of people kind of say okay but Real Techniques is a bit more on the expensive side but you have to think about your brushes as an investment. Mm. So it's something you're going to use for like three or four or five years. So if you invest in good brushes, you'll definitely have good makeup. It's like a photographer that has a good camera, you know, yes, and a hairdresser. No, that's true. Like you've got to, you kind of have to make sure that the equipment that you're using is is good and it's your face after all like yeah. this is your skin you know it's exactly. important to use quality stuff so i'm kind of just working that into her skin obviously if you're doing your own makeup you would just use your hands mm -hmm. but just for sanitary reasons we like using a brush and working that into the skin I'm also taking it down the neck i feel like a lot of people don't do skincare no here. and i think a lot like a lot <laughs> of people don't you don't look after that area you don't look you don't kind of think about moisturizing that area properly and very often that's where like as we get yeah, and wrinkly. It's like the first. Your neck gives you away. <laughs> your face might look fantastic, yeah. but then your neck kind problem. of like tells your age. <laughs> Okay, so while we're just waiting for that to settle in, I think let's talk about primers. Yeah. Great, there's a few There's a few questions. Hi to everybody online, by the way. I finally, it wasn't Welcome. working on my iPad, so <laughs> I took my phone out. Um, I've got some questions, but yeah, um, a few questions about primer. Like Megan was asking why, when even using a primer, my foundation doesn't sit right. That could possibly be because either foundation's not right or maybe the primer's not right. That could be. It could also be that it's not the right primer for your skin type. Remember, you have a primer for oily skin, you get mm. primer for dry skin color correcting exactly mm. um, color correcting primers 
Also, what a lot of people don't know is sometimes when you use, um, say for instance, a primer that's oil-based and you use a foundation that's mainly water-based, it doesn't like... Because oil and water don't mix. Separates. Mm -hmm. So that could be a problem. It's always good to look at your ingredients. There's a lot of stuff on YouTube sure. and Google that you can kind of just search for. But that's also something that you could look at. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's answering Megan's questions. Um, what other primers do you enjoy in general? Like okay. brand-wise, like what yeah. do you like? I, I personally enjoy Smashbox primers. Yes, I do it's have Smashbox Like yeah, for as me, well. <laughs> Smashbox primers are fantastic. Which one is this? This is the Radiance, Radiance primer. primer. Yeah, exactly. Like the Radiance primer is amazing. So good. Why this particular primer, for example? Example. So this primer, is, what I love about Smashbox and Urban Decay is that they actually have a variety of primers. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, Smashbox has color correcting, pore refining, um, you know, like blurring primers. This one is more for radiance and because mm -hmm. we're going for that dewy, fresh, glowy look, it's going to add that, um, you know, a bit of glow to the face. Mm. So, Smashbox I love, Urban Decay I also love. Urban Decay do have great. I also enjoy, I must say, um, Elizabeth Arden's got some great Yes, primers. Elizabeth Arden's primer is also great. The Elizabeth, eight hour. Yes, there's a few. One. There's a few. And then there's also, I mean, what's your opinion on like a primer water or a primer stick versus a traditional primer? I yeah. mean, there's, why are there different products? Why do these different products exist? Because everyone has different needs when it comes to a primer. So either you want to color correct your face or either you have very oily skin, so you want a mattifying primer, which I know Smashbox has the mattifying yes. stick. Yes. Um, Urban Decay has also got the D-Slick primer for, math, for mattifying, uh, like a mattifying finish. And then you have people who really have dry skin. That's where, say for instance, Primerizer comes in from Smashbox. Love the Primerizer. Which is a hydration yeah. and primer in one. So so it really comes down to the fact that everyone has got different needs when it comes to their skin type and it's really important for you to identify those needs and it will make your makeup just go on so much better. Yeah. Also, so I guess to answer all the, because there's a few questions coming through, I guess the answer is like for all of these you need to know your skin type. Yeah. So it's actually very important exactly. for you to understand what type of skin you have in order to find the correct primer and the correct foundation. Yeah. yeah. So just on, to touch on primer as well, like a lot of people always say, oh primer block my pores and mm. it doesn't work for me, it gives me breakouts. In actual fact, primer is actually supposed to protect your skin. So your primer is going to be your barrier between your skin and your foundation. Because foundation goes on and it sets. If you just put foundation on your face, it's going to go into your pores set. And let's just face it, we don't all deep cleanse our skin at night. No. Kind of it's just wash our makeup well, yeah, off. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's impossible to kind of like do that yeah. very deep cleanse every single so time. So a primer is formulated to fill the pores but not block it. So when you wash it, everything comes out mm. and it protects your face. Okay, so... How are we going to apply the primer now? I'm going to go in with my Smashbox Radiance Primer because obviously we want that dewy glow. It's got that sort of like bronzy undertone. Yeah. That's what's great about Which this particular one. I think it's so nice yeah. because especially if your foundation starts wearing off throughout the day, like it usually would, um, that radiant look would just come through. So I'm going to take some on my stippling brush as well and just work it into the skin. It's really important to work it into the skin nicely because you want to mm. fill those pores, make sure it, it's blurred out beautifully and kind of just prep the skin so it's perfect to what we're about to do. Chantal's actually got a really cool question. Um, what's the difference between the cheaper primer and foundation in terms of the more expensive one? Like in this instance, is expensive better? Okay. I mean, so, uh, with makeup, it's a difficult question to yeah. answer because there are some cheaper products that are great. Yes, But I don't exactly. know how you feel about primers specifically. Yeah. So, I mean, you do get primers that don't have the amazing technology. Like, especially if you compare Urban Decay's primers, like, they've got things like self-adjusting pigments. Their setting spray mm. has got temperature control, mm. so it fluctuates with the temperature. You're so not going like, to get that with the cheaper you're products. You're not going to yeah. get that with your cheaper yeah. products. But don't get me wrong, cheaper products can still give you beautiful, flawless makeup. It's just that you're paying more for greater technology that's going to make your makeup last longer and look way better. And I guess it then also depends like where you want to spend your budget. So like make a decision mm. about how much budget I have, what is most important in yes. terms of, you know what I mean? Like, exactly. so maybe invest in a bit more of an expensive primer, mascara, mm. you can maybe get away with a cheaper mascara, yes. you know what like I mean? So essence one. Exactly. Like there's some really great sort of yeah, products that are absolutely. on the cheaper end of the scale, absolutely. but still good quality. Yeah. Okay, cool. cool. So we've primed. We've primed. So now we're going to move on to foundation. I have okay. some questions before we actually go to like application. So I think a lot of questions that are coming up here is how do I match 
the color correctly and yes. matching i think that is the number one problem that people face when it comes Absolutely. to foundation and there's nothing worse when you can kind of see this line and the colors are different and it is difficult it's very difficult yeah. to get it right so yeah. i mean i know that there's different skin tones mm -hmm. and different hues underneath skin tones so exactly. tell people a little bit about that because i know some women don't understand okay so i think the the main thing that i always struggle with when i help people match their foundation is that remember makeup artists are being taught to match their foundations a certain way so when you go to eseluro mac or any counter with makeup really um the 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 problem is that they would probably match you incorrectly because they don't match in the correct area so makeup artist is usually taught well everyone's being told to either match it against the jawline mm -hmm. or the neck yes so my problem with that is that most of us we protect our skin with spf mm -hmm. or um, we are they in the sun a lot where the face is darker than the body or the body is darker than the face so you kind of want to match your foundation to your body because when you do your face you want all of this to blend in mm. um, if i match it to the face i'm going to do the whole face you will see the difference between the neck or the chest area and the face so it's really important i love using the chest to match because i'm going to blend this in downwards yes. so i know when it blends in here it's going to look perfect and that's kind of how you want to match your foundation awesome. so i'm going to show you a little example so i've got three different foundations here um today i'm just using infallible it's really a foundation i've been loving this lately. is i've used infallible so this is l'oreal's infallible yeah um i've they're brilliant um nice buildable coverage yes so that's also something we need to chat about, like different types of foundation, but yes. we'll get there. Let's first talk about the color matching because it's important. Awesome. Yeah. Also, don't be fooled by the names because I know sometimes True. it will say... I think that's mainly like, it's, it's very often a marketing thing. Yes. Like, you know, the marketers give it like cool names, but it's not necessarily like a beige or yeah. a tan. Yeah, and also the or... problem is like someone is perhaps rosy beige in Revlon and then they go buy a L'Oreal rosy beige and the colors are absolutely different. For sure. So I have like three different shades on my hand, yeah? So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna basically apply that to her chest or how do you say this decolletage decolletage yeah i, I never know how to say correct? that word <laughs> decolletage yes yes it's very okay, fancy i'm kind of just French, gonna but i'm not blending that so in and the last one and you see that then the other thing you need to also consider is you might be a different color in winter versus summer exactly you know so that's why i always find that my foundation changes especially when i self tan because mm -hmm. then you go from dark lighter 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 mm -hmm. so you constantly change yeah or well, if it's just um, summer you've spent more time in the sun yeah yeah and another nice tip that i have is to invest in some lightning drops so body shop has an amazing lightning drops that you can just use with your darkest foundation that's and amazing. lighten it i didn't even know that, that existed yeah and wow. what what's cool is it doesn't interfere with your coverage so you just add it to the foundation yeah. to make it lighter you just mix a little bit on your hand and that's your incredible uncle. body shop that's a, okay that's a good tip so when we look at this you can kind of clearly see that this one stands out as being yes. much lighter that's too light this one is quite nice but it's a, like a tinge too dark and a bit too so orange likely. and i kind of feel like she has a yellow tone but it's also like more on the orangey side it's not too yellow okay. so it can be tricky sometimes i know there's people out there who have like weird skin tones like it's not rose like combination yeah. Sort of yeah. yeah 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 so this middle one is the one that really fades in the best like it kind of when you stand back when you stand back you can kind of not see it yes. and that's then how you know that that's it's your correct shade. that's amazing all right okay so, so you've gone for the middle one over there we are just going to wipe this i know off. we've got some images that we'll show um as well and we'll bring up just to talk about like different skin tones like cool versus mm. um cool versus warmer etc yeah. um are we ready to bring those up yeah. not just yet okay we can carry on here okay first. cool yeah so um, other foundations that I recommend mm -hmm. would obviously be, um, I love Urban Decay's All Nighter. It's a yes. full coverage The All matte. Nighter concealer yeah. is also freaking Amazing. Cool. Yeah. Um, it's amazing for oily skin because it's matte, it's oil free, it's waterproof. So I love that for brides because mm. when they cry and they dance and they do whatever, it will stay on the whole day. Um, naked skin is also quite nice. It's like a semi-matte. Semi mm. um, this one, yeah. Yeah. 
And then also as a more affordable option, we've got the L'Oreal Infallible um, Revlon color stay is also quite nice. I also love the Catrice HD liquid yes, foundation. Yes, the one with the dropper. Oh, it's so, it's it's like, it's, so I mean, it's, it's, it's a brand that you can buy at like a Discam or a Clicks, yes. one of those. It's really, really affordable. Yeah. Um, so I personally enjoy the Catrice HD liquid and foundation. And then we yeah. also have this one from NYX, which is also like a mattifying water-based cool. one. Very, Very cool. nice. Shall we quickly bring up these pictures and show you yeah. just for a split second? So like there are different undertones that you've got to think about so sometimes someone might have a yellow undertone um, let's see if it's coming up there you go yellow undertone so this is a yellow undertone uh, and we're going to update this to the next picture there's another picture of a yellow undertone skin and that's where you kind of need to have a look and the way that you can kind of see it is you can look at they say that you can look into at, at your veins apparently mm. that's like a way to yeah, taste whether your yeah whether your your veins appear blue or green or whatever it might be and then let me show you the pink undertones these are the pink undertones in somebody's skin more pinky and that's more pink so it, it, and it, it kind of like ranges like you say it can go from sort of yellow to orange and it can go from pink to red mm. so it can be very tricky um, one trick that I did read about and that I have been told by makeup artists before is if you if you take something that's pure white and you take something that's cream and you put it next to your face if you look better with pure white you might be more of a cool undertone and if it's a, a cream color, then you might be more of a yellow undertone. Yeah. But whether or not that's a true sort of trick, well, I'm, I'm not too sure. Like the image consultants, they also use like the gold cloth and the silver yes. cloth. Yes, and then they tell of, you if, yeah. if, if, if gold suits you better, then you're yeah. yellow. And if silver yeah. suits you better, then supposedly yeah. you're cooler. But, but you it, never it, know. It, it, yeah, it, it, it's it tricky. Is tricky. It yeah. is tricky. Until you find your undertone, then you'll be good with foundation. Another thing I just quickly want to mention is also oxidization when it comes to foundations. Do you know what this, this means? This I've never heard of. Okay. I don't know. Have you ever applied a foundation and then um, two or five, five or ten minutes later it seems like your face is just really orange or it's like really That's, yellow. Yes, actually yes, I have experienced okay. that. Yeah. So sometimes this does happen with foundations when they come in contact with oxygen, it changes colour or the undertone really comes out. Sure. So I don't know exactly why it does this, I know it's something like to do a with a chemical reaction. Yes, yeah. something to do with the amount of pigment and that sort of thing. But another thing when you're testing your foundation is also good to wait like a few minutes just to see if it oxidises and also asking the brands, you know, does this product oxidise or that sort of thing. So cool. that's what's up. Cool. cool. So I put some on my little tray over here and the, the item, the tool that I'm going to use to blend out her foundation today is actually my old trusty Real Technique sponge. Good old sponge. <laughs> love a beauty okay. blender. So um, what I love about a sponge is that you can get flawless full coverage um, a flawless full coverage application but what's amazing about it is that it picks up foundation where you have too much and it kind of places it where you need more so another trick that I recently learned was to actually spray my foundation with some setting spray before blending it out because then you're spraying uh, setting spray into your foundation so it's going to help set it better and it's also going to give it this beautiful glowy look because I'm using the MAC Fix Plus um, this is the pink light one so it's got like a pinky tone to it so that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up some foundation. I'm going to give it like two a spritz. Bit of a spritz. And then I'm going to start by just bouncing it onto the skin. So here's my next question. I've noticed now that you have gone for foundation first and not concealer. And that was actually a question that came up earlier. Um, and somebody had said like, do you conceal first? Or do you put your foundation on first? So, I mean, everyone has like their own way of doing their foundation routine. There's no right or wrong. Like, mm -hmm. there's no like, if you don't conceal beforehand, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, or I think I've been in the makeup chair where makeup artists have done one before the before other. And, and it after, kind of, yeah. It's just preference, I guess. Yeah, obviously, you get your color correction. I must be honest, I don't color correct like on everyone because I kind of feel like the foundation and concealer covers enough afterwards. So color correction is not like my favorite thing to do unless mm. I really, really have to. Mm. Um, but other than that, basically your concealer, I like applying it afterwards because I use like a lighter shade. So it's almost like you're highlighting, but you're not doing the full highlighting and contouring routine. So you're just highlighting a little bit on the inner perimeters of the face while also concealing the under eyes. Mm. Um, also, I feel like if you conceal beforehand, like with a sponge, it's fine because you're just like dabbing over it. But if you're using a brush to buff it in, it kind of just buffs away. I was going to say, you're almost taking it away. Yeah. So yeah, I think that kind of, uh, what was it, Manya? Manya asked the same question. She said, what's the best tool to apply my foundation with? As you can see, like, 
you know and i think it, again yeah. that's also preference like but exactly. i do th- i do think i, I understand Absolutely. what you're saying you get like a lot you get even coverage with the sponge yes and, and you can I blend think it's nicely great for beginners because I think with a brush, some people are a bit intimidated. But if you do want a brush, I would never recommend those flat, old school foundation brushes. The one I like would be the real one, once again, <laughs> real techniques. Yeah. Face Expert brush. I know what you mean about like a paddle brush. It's that sort of like very flat the paddle flat brush. The flat one, I feel like it's yeah. stripey. Whereas your, your, no, your buffing brush, you kind of yeah. get like that airbrushed look and full coverage as well. Tash King wants to know, where did you get that tray? This little what tray. Oh, this is a little mud, mud tray. Mud. Okay, there you go. And it's actually quite handy because it's very sanitary. You're not using your hands that much. Crystal um, also says that she loves Catrice. Snap. I use that most days. Yes. I agree. Um, Kelly wants to know: Have you tried the Coverderm foundation? No, I haven't. Okay, we're they actually that sent me one, but they sent me a darker shade. So, so it's not the right color. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't try it. No. Oh, you know what else is really, really nice? Um, from Catrice is the camouflage concealer. Have you tried that one? I haven't, no. I haven't tried the camouflage. It's phenomenal. It's so good. Very, very cool. And it's waterproof. So you can see I'm kind of taking this down in the neck and you can see how it really, like it matches beautifully. Yeah, it does. It really, really looks amazing. And it's it's kind of, yeah, it's looking really even. So now, and I mean, dewy, right? in, terms of, mm-hmm. in terms of a liquid versus a compact, what okay. are your thoughts there? So my personal opinion is I'm not a fan of like, um, you know, your cream foundation yes, and stuff. Yeah. The reason why is if you have dry skin, yes. But for any other skin, I feel like it kind of moves around on the face. Mm. Even though you put a lot of powder on, mm. it starts looking cakey. When you touch your face, it transfers. Mm. So I prefer a liquid that kind of sets into mm. the face. And I also feel like you get that lightweight feel. Mm-hmm. Whereas cream foundations can kind of feel very heavy if you're doing the full coverage. Mm full coverage vibe, yeah. Somebody, I, I can't remember who asked it, but it was a question that came up earlier and somebody said, how do you stop foundation from sort of settling in your like laugh lines? Okay. You know what I mean? When it, get, it kind yes. of like makes a mark, so yeah. how, do so you have a, a, a fix for that? Yes, there's a few tips. Either it can obviously be your primer, you can need like a good um, line refining primer. I know a lot of people also use the MAC paint pots, you know, the paint yes, pots. Yes, 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 yes. use painterly for things like that so it doesn't increase as much. And then baking. Baking also really helps with your foundation not settling into. So what it's going to do is basically set your foundation nicely so when you smile, um, it, it moves with the face and it doesn't like move hmm. into those lines. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, Melissa says, I always find foundation to be an issue around the nose area. It sort of looks dry and still settles in pores even though a primer is used. Okay. Any idea so, why that could be? Um, it depends on what primer she's using. Maybe she's not using a high-end primer. Um, sometimes you just get this thing where makeup works on one person and doesn't on the other 100%, person. Yeah. And that's when you have to change the product, try different things, okay. moisturize your nose a lot, do uh, masks and that sort of yes. thing too. To help with that. So yeah. Melissa, like it's difficult to say because we don't know what products you're using, but I think just the answer is experiment. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Cool. So what's next? What are we doing? Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with some concealer, mm-hmm. which is the fun part. Okay, cool. Yeah, concealer. If you've got any questions about concealer, then this yeah. is your chance to like ask go. about that. Yeah, I think so, concealer. So I mean, obviously, a lot of people use concealer to cover up problem areas. Yes. Like I have very dark circles under my eyes, so I like to conceal but you've got to use the right colors because if you don't yes. then it can look gray it can look a bit exactly. weird so what are the tricks and tips yeah especially when you're looking at your more darker skin tones mm. you'll see that they end up using more of a custard or a yellowy tone highlighter where for us we'd go more for that light pink or that light yellow mm. um and you you kind of want to stay away from ashy shades yeah. when you're working on darker skin tones for them you have to use more browns and warm orange colors sure. um so i I just have a few concealers here as well that I want to um, chat about. So I kind of want to sneeze. Oh, if you need Can to you sneeze. Can you believe it? Yeah, listen, we're live. If she's, <laughs> got, a, if she's got a sneeze, you've got a sneeze. Okay, so sneeze gone. I have a few concealers. Obviously, you've mentioned All Nighter. All Nighter Love is... Love All Nighter. Like, I've again, tried this one. It's amazing. An amazing matte formula. Um, it is a gel formula. It does dry a little bit darker, but it does not oxidize. You get them in so many different shades. But obviously, no, we're not going for a very matte look, so I'm going to steer away from these guys for today. Cool. But they are full coverage, so yeah. that's why I'm saying, like, you don't need to color correct if you have such a full coverage. That's um, true. 
concealer. Uh, an affordable one that I'm loving at the moment is definitely the Catrice Camouflage one. Very and then cool. also the, these are quite new, the Fit Me Maybelline ones. You also get them in a whole lot of different shades. And then obviously Shape Tape from Tarte, which is an international product. Yeah. Um, so if someone's coming from overseas and you can send them to Sephora, then that's what yeah. you send them there for. But I would highly recommend using news services if you want to buy international makeup. True story. They do sell authentic products. True story. If you want to go that route. So I'm going to go in with Fit Me. So I've got two different shades over here. I've got a 20 and a 15. So the 20, I'm just going to put on my palette over here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to use that with a little, little cute brushy. And Tash has also just said something here that I want to read to you just so that you can hear. The Smashbox 24 hour primer for eyeshadow, it works well for laugh lines. So it's a specific, it's I've like, got that primer. Yeah. So it's a specific, it's in the little tube, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. It's like in a smaller. And it's the exact same thing as the paint pot. Yes, from exactly. Yeah. So yes, we agree with you. That's a great product to use. So yeah, thanks so for that, Tash. I'm just going to use my darker shade just to conceal. Let me go around this side so go you guys can it. see what I'm doing. Um, I'm just going to conceal some spots in her face using a concealer that's more or less the same shade. Colour, exactly. Yeah, as her foundation. And then for under the eyes, I'm going to conceal with a lighter concealer. Just kind so. of lift it a little bit. Yeah, and really bring out the eyes. Mm. It makes the world difference yeah. when you highlight your eyes on a daily basis. Stunning. Okay, so I'm going to go in with my 15. I'll put some of on here. I kind of feel like I want to mix it with a little bit of... <laughs> Nicole's, Nicole, Nicole Nyker says, um, I don't use any of these. I'm more of an eyeshadow and eyeliner kind of girl with a red lip. And that's great. Like, that's the great thing about that's makeup. That's amazing. You Obviously, kind of you have, have amazing to, skin. And I mean, a lot of people are scared of red lipstick. So if yeah. you can rock a red lip, go for it. Like, yeah. do what you need to do. And I also feel like if you don't have a lot of time, you just do a bold lip and boom. I'm like that. You so, look so I good. get lash extensions. Like, this is me being very lazy on a daily <laughs> basis. I've got lash extensions. I put a little bit of foundation on, maybe some concealer and a, and a bold lipstick. Yeah. And I'm like, bye-bye. I'm ready to go and now. I mean, look. You look amazing. That's literally like that's what I did tonight. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with my sponge once again. I'm gonna pick up some concealer. Once again, I'm just gonna give it like a light spritz mm -hmm. um, to add that dewiness and also help it set better, last the whole day. And you can kind of see when I'm highlighting underneath her eyes, I'm doing like this triangle. And the reason why we do that is natural light, like even if you look at the down lights, mm -hmm. if we stand right under a down light, it kind of throws this triangle light on your face. Mm -hmm. So you're mimicking, um, you know, natural light being fall, like fall, falling on the For face. Sure. Um, and that really brings out the eyes. So that's why we highlight in a triangle. That's a good trick. I've actually, like I've never heard that. That's And brilliant. it really brings out the eyes. So I'm just going to do like one side first. So you guys can kind of see the difference. Shelby says, I've heard the morph sponges are amazing. Yes. Morphe. Morphe. I never know. It's, a, it's Morphe, Morphe, right? Morphe. <laughs> I never know how. I never know if it's Morphe yeah. or Morphe. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. so, so good. It's very similar to this one. Yeah. I also have it. I really love it. But yeah, my one's a bit like worn. For sure. So. Yeah, okay. I see exactly what you Can mean. Can you see the difference? Yeah. Like the eyes just really, really come out. Very cool. Okay, gonna take some more. Do you have any other questions? I'm, I'm looking through these. Um, <laughs> Interested to try out the Catrice foundation. Um, I'm just looking, looking, looking. Candice, would you still use a sponge on aged skin? I think she means like somebody with wrinkles. Yeah. Yeah. So the way you do makeup on mature skin is way different compared to ours. Oh, actually, we, might have, we might have to do like a separate hour <laughs> yeah, for that. You yeah, know? absolutely, which is not a bad idea. Um, but I love using a sponge. Mm. I just use my lightweight foundation. You know, I'd mm. rather go for like my naked skin. Yes, or... so not something with full, full, full coverage. Yes, yeah. exactly. And then also using a stippling brush, like the one I applied the primer mm -hmm. with, which is going to blend it out softly. Because mm -hmm. um, with more mature skin, you want to be very careful with full coverage foundations because mm. it can really settle into those fine lines, mm. show the texture and that sort of thing. Okay, so I highlighted underneath her eyes and just to balance out, I'm going to take a little bit, apply some to the chin area. And the nose. There you go. Like that. A little bit of highlighting. And that's basically a like a daily highlighting routine. Very quick and easy to do. 
Very cool. Okay, that looks awesome. beautiful. That looks absolutely beautiful. I'm ready beautiful. to move on to the next step. Yeah, we can move on. <laughs> no, we can absolutely move on. Cool, so us. now we have our foundation. Now the thing is a lot of people love the fact that it's so dewy and pretty. But the problem is when I touch her face, it might transfer. Exactly, so you need to set. When you hug someone, mm -hmm. comes off on their t-shirt, that whole sort of vibe. So I love setting my foundation, but once again, then the powder creates like this matte look and you're taking away that dewiness. So I have the perfect solution for that and Shame. you guys are going to love it. So I'm going to use my sponge. It's not super wet, like when I squeeze it, no water's coming out. You yeah. want to make sure that it's not too wet because it is going to break up your makeup if it is wet. Um, and then I have different powders that you can use. I prefer translucent powder. Yeah. I just feel like that's the best to use on your skin tone at any time of year. Um, I know makeup artists that I work with love the Chanel translucent. Love it. Makeup Absolutely Forever. Love it. Makeup Forever has a fantastic translucent powder. Yes. Um, Laura Mercier is a very popular powder. Yes. It's very expensive. Yes. Um, but my more affordable ones. But it lasts forever. Yes. You it know, does. those pots of powder, like if you're buying a translucent powder, yes, it might be more expensive yeah. if you go for like a Laura Mercier, but it lasts yeah. like literally forever yeah it yeah. does for yeah. yourself if yeah. you make a ball just not no <laughs> exactly like if you're working on faces all day long then yes that's difficult. so an affordable one that i like is a sorbet powder to you this one is not so bad but my absolute favorite i actually use this one in my kit believe it or not is the yardley absolute translucent and i mean yardley is not an expensive it's super expensive feel brand like how finely let's do this feel how finely milled that is yeah, you like can actually so feel. Soft yeah, you can and feel. It really blends into the foundation beautifully. So I'm gonna pick up some with my damp sponge. I just wanna put this on your lap. Over go there. for it. I've got some. And I'm not gonna go it. into the face directly with this. I'm kinda just gonna pat some off on my yeah, hand. Yeah, just to get the excess off. And then I'm gonna go under the eyes first and I'm kind of pressing it into the skin to really make sure that it sets, but it's not too matte. Yeah, it doesn't take away that sheen, that yeah. little bit of glow. And I'm going to show you something else, which is also going to bring back the glow. Stunning. Okay, Got so. a question. Mm. Um, what do you think of LA concealers? And what about using them for contouring as well? That's from Shelby. Okay, so LA concealers were quite nice when they just launched in South Africa because we didn't have affordable concealers that were that amazing. Yes. But I feel now like the market's so changed. much more out yeah. there. I don't like the LA Girl concealers for contouring because I feel like the darker shades are when you apply them, they kind of settle. They don't blend out nicely. Okay. So not um, so you wouldn't use it necessarily for contouring. No, but a products. nice contouring uh, product is the Rimmel stick. Mm. NYX has also got a, a, a stick and then your more expensive products are like the Benefit Hula, mm. Hula Bronzer. Mm. Yeah, cool. So we set the foundation and if you feel that, you can feel that it's not like too matte. No, and it's not um, going to come off on you either. Yeah. yeah. So it's still matte though, it's not as dewy. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do first is we're going to add our bronzer, blush and highlighter and then I want to show you the trick that's going to change your life. Awesome, please do. <laughs> please show us a trick that'll change our lives, yes, especially when it comes friend. to makeup. <laughs> okay, so next step is to really bronze up the face and add that subtle glow. Now, bronzer, blush and highlighter is something I would highly recommend for daily use, just yes. because it really sculpts the face. A full coverage foundation can really make the face look really flat. So when we add our bronzer, blush and highlighter, it's going to add definition. Yeah, it gives it that dimension that you want. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a few nice bronzers out there, affordable ones, like um, this one from Love Cosmetics, which uh, you can buy on Discount. Um, this is actually such, look at how nice this that highlighter is. Beautiful. is. Yeah, that's so stunning. buttery. Ooh. And you have highlighter this. that you'll see on Mars. Yes, honey. which is what you'll we are find going to us do on today. Mars if we would wear this highlighter. And then you beautiful. obviously have your MAC um, Hyper Real Glow, which is yes. also like also really stunning. I love, um, for me, the one international brand that you don't necessarily get, but I love is the Anastasia Beverly Hills. Yes. Oh, the glow kits. Oh, like, I mean, that <gasps> Huda Beauty, yeah. you have your even Kylie Jenner's loose pigments. I mean, we need a Sephora in South Africa. Hello. Sephora, please come here. <laughs> Sephora, please you'll come here bankrupt <laughs> but please come yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so the one i'm going to use on her is a matte um bronzer from urban uk this is beach bronzer i've um, never used this one yeah it's actually really really nice beautiful so i'm going to use like a big powdery brush and what i'm going to do is just dip into my bronzer. i'm just telling so shelby was asking how um uh, or no not shelby melanie was saying dark rings under my eyes should i use concealer it will help you yes so like yes. if you find the right concealer it'll definitely be your best friend 
Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm kind of like bronzing in a shape of a, of a three, mm. but I'm holding my brush at the back so I get like that light feathery movement. So it's not, when too, you, yes. not too hard on the when face. When you hold your brush in front, think of it as a pen. You get that pressure. When you hold your pen at the back, you can't really write with it, but that's kind of the feel we want when, when doing the face. So I'm kind of just bronzing in the neck area. Beautiful. And then I'm gonna go this side. Some over here. I see some artists use banana powder to set under the eye. Our Morag's got banana powder, however they don't use it all over. Is it just for brightening under the eye? That's a question from Melissa. So remember your opposite colour from yellow is purple. So usually you have purple under eyes when you're really tired mm -hmm. and you know that sort of thing. So the yellow is going to brighten it up but mm. also you want to be careful of too yellow. I, I'd yeah. say for ethnic skin, yellow banana powders are great, but when it comes to lighter skin, you have to be careful because it can also darken your under eye. I was area. gonna say, I didn't have a good experience with banana powder. I wasn't a yeah. huge fan. If you yeah, like, we've tried it, not, and I was like, mm, not so yeah. sure. So, uh, for the nose, I'm just gonna squeeze my brush. Just look at me quickly and just kind of go on the bone. There you go, a bit of contour. Yes, That's adding a little, a little bit of contour, yeah. we're bronzing <laughs> but contouring at the same time. So it's not too hectic, it's still very subtle and you can kind of see how the shape, how the face. People are liking this bronzer, the bronzer looks amazing. The bronzer is the best thing Love on it. earth. Yeah, you're right. You're totally, totally <laughs> Okay, right. and then I'm going to go in with a bronzer with a little bit of a shimmy shimmy. Yes. It's not something I like to use just to bronze, bronze. I'd always just go in with it afterwards. Just to kind touch, of like, just kind like, of afterwards, give yeah, it a little bit of... Just add over that bronzer we've done. Add that glowiness. Put some on the skin. Stunning. That looks beautiful. Love a good bronzer. Robin, I hope you're going out after this because... Yeah! You know? <laughs> <laughs> you're looking fantastic for a Wednesday night. It's time to go out. <laughs> okay. So our next step is then, obviously, the blush. So, I'm gonna go in with my new UD Sin palette. This is quite nice. It's got like mm, bronzers, blush, highlighters. And you see, this is something like if you're not necessarily a makeup artist, yes. buying one product like this, it's got everything that you need in one yeah. palette. So, I think look for versatility when you're shopping for palettes. Especially. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. So, I'm gonna go with like a nice peachy blush. I might just mix it with a little bit of the brown bronzer. And I'm going to apply that to the apples of the cheeks and kind of once again holding my brush at the back. Just sweep it up and down in feathery strokes. So it's kind of going to overlap your bronzer a bit, but add some of that color. Then we want something to do the same on the other side. That looks really great. Just look at me quickly. I just want to see if it's even. That looks beautiful. Cool. And then we have the most exciting part. Tell us. Highlighter. Oh yeah, highlighter, highlighter. We do love a highlighter. <laughs> we I could, love highlighter. We love highlighter. Like, exactly. Like highlighter will become your best friend. Yeah. yeah. I also, I, I hear a lot of people saying like there is a thing as too much highlighter, but I think if you do it right. There's no such thing There's as too no much highlighter. Thing. I completely agree. I get shouted at on sets all the time by directors because Morag and I put way too much highlighter on. And know. then and then they think we're shiny. You know what I mean? They're like, you're shiny. Go get powder. I'm like, no, 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 I don't need powder. It's, it's just my highlighter. <laughs> so yeah. So um, once again, Sin is a really nice high-end highlighter Beautiful. that you can use. We just swatched the Love one. Another one I just want to show you guys is um, the Inglot loose highlighters these are so pretty just look at this yeah look at that yeah that, that is beautiful i don't know if you guys can tell but it's like so shimmery that's super shimmery beautiful so i'm gonna leave that for last best for last so first i'm gonna go in with my affordable love palette while um, you're doing that i just wanted to ask katen wants to know for contouring is it better to use a cream or a powder contour so a lot of people actually think that powder contour is easier because it's less mm -mm. intimidating but you can actually start looking muddy super quickly mm. with powder contour yeah i kind of agree i actually think i think a cream is easier cream contouring is very intimidating because you have like all these lines but, but actually it it's, out. it's much easier to blend i yeah. completely agree i completely agree so just turn your face a little bit this way so the light can hit it and we're just gonna basically apply it on the top like the top part of the cheekbone you can it's see my like brush is quite close to the eye area and i'm also like taking that into the blush a little bit 
and turn your face this way. People want to see a masterclass on liners and eyeshadows. We def it's coming. We're doing week by week, so don't we worry. We can just we're do one thing at a yeah, time. Yeah, one thing at a time. Today we're focusing on the foundation and the base. We actually got a little bit more than foundation today, which is great. Yeah. But yeah, we're, we're going to be doing more. So make sure make sure you check in next week because there will be more content. I'm also just adding some above the brows. Um, you know, Nostrick, that Blake Lovely's makeup artist uses, she actually applies a little bit of blush above the brow here and it just gives you like this That's nice amazing. rosy look. Really? Yeah. Above the eyebrows? Yeah. I've never heard of that trick. Yeah. And you know what, if it's good enough for Blake Lively, it's Girl. good enough for us. Yeah. Exactly, she's stunning. <laughs> We're also going to do the Cupid's bow. This will give the illusion yes, of a nice I love lumpy putting highlighter lip. on Cupid's bow. It's my favorite. Absolutely. And then also like the tip of the nose and the bridge. There you like go. That. And then whatever's left a little bit on the chin. But you kind of want to stay away from this area, like there, because that's where usually sweats become oily. Mm -hmm. So we always want to keep it on the outside and then those little high points. Okay. Beautiful. So everyone says the highlight is on fleek. Looks so good. Yes, and it's Thank affordable. You, Taylor. Like that's hey, the Taylor. best thing ever. Okay, so now, I mean, we do have a lot of glow, but mm -hmm. I want to bring more glow in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my setting spray. And setting spray is also something that people don't necessarily have, you know, yes. in, you know, if you're a makeup artist, yes, but I think if, you, if you're not a makeup artist, sometimes you don't have a setting spray. Setting spray is most definitely your best friend. I also love the Glam Glow setting spray. Yes, the one of oh, the, that mist. The, the misty one. It's so, so nice. nice. And even if, it, if, it, if it's just to refresh your makeup during the day, like halfway through the yeah. day, to take a setting spray to kind of give it a bit of a, a spritz, your makeup will just look fresh all over yeah, again. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to go in and really wet her face. So I want you to close your eyes and take a deep breath because <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to sweat it. Okay. And you can see that I'm really going in there with my with my setting spray. Her face is wet, yes. like soaking wet. Yeah, so you kind of have to like, so you just feel like I just want to fan closed. you. Yeah. <laughs> so then you can like basically fan um, your setting spray with like a paper or your... Mm -hmm. Or your hands and I'm just gonna wait for that to so can you see how it's like melting the powder into the skin and it just brings that glowy look it does back. actually like I can literally see it and happening. then I go in with my sponge and I kind of just gently uh, someone gently had a good question I'm just trying to find it now um, how do you avoid overall patchiness and flakiness? That's from Nicole. I think, to be honest, I mean, I'm just going to answer from my personal experience, mm. moisturizer. If you haven't prepped your face properly and then you put on your foundation, I feel like that's when it becomes flaky. Yes. I don't know how you feel. Yeah. If you haven't maybe primed properly or moisturized properly. Once again, so many reasons why that could happen. Mm. You could have really dry skin. You must exfoliate. Your skincare routine is really important. Also, you could be um, using the wrong foundation for your mm -hmm. skin type. If you have dry skin and you're using an uh, all-nighter, a compact or something like a that, a very yeah. dry foundation, yeah. it's gonna flake. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Amy Louise says, wow, looks stunning. I've learned so much so far. Yay! Thanks for watching, everyone. This has so, been lastly, for the hump. Freaking amazing highlight. <laughs> We're gonna go in with our Inglot loose highlighter, and I'm literally just gonna put some of that on the top points where the light would usually hit. Yeah. And the same on the other side. That's beautiful. The International Space Station can now see Robin. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Not just the Great Wall of China, you can see Robin as well. Yes. <laughs> you look gorgeous. So that's basically how you create like your really flawless foundation routine. And as soon as you get into the routine, you'll start seeing that it actually goes very quickly yes. every morning. Like you'll get, I think you get used to doing your face and if you do it over yeah. and over, you get to kind of get into this quiz. I've got some questions. Can I run awesome. them by you? Yeah, so, I'm going to put lips on while we just like... So Megan was asking why on the Cupid's bow? Why did you put highlighter on the Cupid's okay. bow? So usually you remember I put some bronzer underneath her lips. Um, that is to give the illusion of shadow so yes. it will look like a really Fuller. plumpy lip and on the top we put highlighter over here because that's going to give the illusion that light's hitting the lip so it's going to give a plumpy upper lip so it's also for definition it's yeah kind of just like yeah that's really cool oh, uh people are saying eyes next please we will do eyes next week or the week <laughs> after you'll have to keep watching um i've heard you can use hairspray as setting spray nicola asks Ooh. is that true i wouldn't put hairspray on my face to yeah. be honest to be honest i know that it's an old hack but if you think about it, mm -hmm. hairspray has a lot of alcohol in it. And chemicals. And chemicals. It's not I really wouldn't. made for the face. So yeah. yes, it does keep your makeup in place. But why use hairspray if you have a setting exactly. spray? Exactly. There's so many good setting yeah. sprays. Um, why, what are your thoughts on liquid highlighter? Candace wants to know. 
Liquid highlighter, I love it. You know a nice trick is to really layer your highlighter. Like I already layered like twice, but you can do a liquid highlighter. The most important thing you want to remember is to always do that before you're using any powder. If you're going to use a liquid highlighter over powder, it's going to cake. Mm. So make sure you put it on before you start with your powder routine, but also top it off with another highlighter. So you'll find that blush and highlighter is one of the first things that kind of goes mm. when, when yes. you know. Um, so I sometimes like using a cream blush and then a powder blush over that. Cream highlighter, powder highlighter over that. So you layer it so when the top layer comes off, you always have your backup. Mm. <laughs> I've got a question from Yanita. Um, and I think I know how to answer this. I, I sweat excessively on my nose to the extent that I don't want to apply foundation on it at all and just powder over it. I would recommend personally like a mattifying primer yes. on your nose. So Absolutely. the primer stick from Smashbox is a really good one and they've also got then the normal, like the, 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 the mattifying yes. primer like this. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what you would and say also, to that. Because she said, should I try Botox? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Some I don't people know say about that, it, that. Some people say that it helps, but we're yes. we're not we don't we're wanna, not doctors, we don't, so not we don't know. Record, no. no, but um, bake bake your nose. Like it honestly really helps a lot. If you're using a mattifying primer, um, you know even the Urban Decay D Slick is very like drying, so you have to have like really oily or sweaty skin to use that. But your D Slick, I kind of mix it into my foundation mm. and put it on those areas where my clients usually really get oily. Um, so the D Slick actually has a type of clay in it that mm. absorbs three times the amount of its own you know like if you use a little bit it absorbs three times to that amount mm. so you have all those options out there i think a lot of people just aren't educated enough on on that but For i mean sure. that's why we're Shop doing around this. and that's why we're here exactly yeah. that's exactly it okay what else are we adding any some lippies oh, a little bit of lip and you must by the way um if you don't follow candy already at candy can makeup on instagram and i know that she does private classes you yes. can also come to her studio she's got a beautiful studio that you could go like if you wanted one-on-one -on -one classes she does that sort of stuff as well yeah and that's i think you know it's it's always great to do that because makeup is very specific it's specific for yes. you it's specific for your skin type for your Every skin tone so to have a one-on-one -on -one class even if it's just one or two classes i think you'll learn so so much that looks beautiful and there we have it. Stunning. There Ta you go. Ta-da! I feel like I need some, I don't know. Yeah, we like need a, some confetti. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where's the confetti? Where's the confetti? That's beautiful. So. That looks absolutely gorgeous. Well, listen, I learned a lot. I'm so happy. So um, thank you to everybody who's watching. Like, we really yeah. appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, I think that we will definitely be back. I can promise yes. you that much. The series will continue. So uh, <laughs> make sure that you keep posted on both of our, our Instagram pages, at Roxy Berg on Instagram, at Candy Cam Makeup. Robin, thank you. Thank you so much you look absolutely gorgeous yes. i feel like you really need to go out yeah, now because you absolutely. look you look way too good to just go home um, and we'll see you next time yeah thank you, thank you so much thanks bye, bye. everyone